Um, the other problem is that, um, as I'm sure you all know, that uh, the books are under copyright. So we decided that we would get around this problem by concentrating on books that were out of copyright, for which they were in the public domain, not an issue. You can see some famous dead people there. <laughs> All of them wrote books, or plays, or other literary works. And, you know, it's a lot of human history, but not a lot of books presented to us. Uh, then we worked with publishers and we said, you know, if you want more publicity for your, for your book, we'll let you decide, you know, how much information from the book you make available, you just give us a PDF file or whatever. Uh, and publishers were very happy to do this. In fact, they're still very happy. You've perhaps heard about uh, a bit of a brouhaha between publishing industry and, and Google. Uh, that relates to, you know, this area over here. And then we have this partnership program over here, and that the publishers are very happy with. Um, it gets exposure for their books, increases sales. We're very happy with it too, but that's only 5% of all books. Mm -hmm. The kind of books that people think about when they think about book search, the kinds of books that if you're going to Amazon and doing a look inside the book functionality, that's the kind of things that you see. It isn't like only 5% of books. What's left? You saw those? What's left is, and I'm no lawyer, but I've been assured is this legally limbo state where maybe they're still copyright, maybe they're on public domain, maybe the copyright's owned by the publisher, maybe it's reverted to the author, maybe it's owned by some state, maybe it's owned by no one knows who. Uh, it's most of the books that have ever been published. And we were interested in getting that material as well. We think that uh, all the material is impossible to find now that perhaps the stuff that's most difficult to find. And basically, if it weren't for libraries, it wouldn't be possible to find it at all. These are all books that are out of print. Publishers aren't interested in promoting access to them because they can't print them anymore, so they're not going to make any money off of it. Um, it's not public domain, so it's not like a well-known classical work. But it still can have a lot of useful information. A lot of these books that are published are very, um, very interesting and very useful. Right now, you can go to a library and find them, but you have to know that they exist. So we decided that we would uh, index all those as well. And being conservative and being respectful of the fact that their copyright still may be owned by someone, we decided it would show only small snippets from these books. Uh, our basic goal there was to make you know that the book was available and had content that was useful to you. You can go to your local library to find the book and find out more about it. And that's basically the matter stand now. I'll just talk with one more example about making information available. Um, Google Scholar, it started as a research project by one of our engineers named Anurag. Um, he's from India, he's from one of these cities. Um, I don't know why they're any other ones. Um, he did his um, undergraduate thesis on some technological problem, and he spent all this time on it. And he published his work, and within 48 hours of publishing the work, he uh, got a letter from someone in academia, outside India, saying, well, you know, you made this basic assumption on page two that was disproved four years ago. He wasn't very happy that uh, <laughs> page two was where the problem was. It was like, you know, page two of the appendix, it might have been okay. But his entire thesis was shot because he didn't have access to this work from four years ago that was very relevant to a subject that would have put him on an entirely different and he vowed one day, one day, he would make life better for people in that same situation. Google Scholar is the result. Um, the idea is to put all sorts of academic works online, make them searchable in the same way as Google, and as a result, uh, as Google web pages, I should say. And as a result, you can find that four year old paper that has that result that's so crucial to your work. He did it all, it launched about two years ago now, and um, I'm not an academia myself anymore. Um, don't tell my parents. Um, <laughs> but um, they, uh, from my friends and, 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 and folks I know who are, it's um, apparently a very, very useful reference, and we're very glad to hear it. Uh, I'm going to put the 
five bulleted points, again, I'll give you a, a sneak preview. These are all the different kinds of things that, that Google Scholar can do. For those who aren't familiar, I'm just going to briefly um, demonstrate what they are. You know, the main thing, number one, is you know, you do a search for something, you find a paper that has um, that relates to that subject. In this case, it's a, a famous paper by Einstein. By and um, they tell you the information about it, um, who, uh, who wrote it, what the name of the paper is. We also tell you how popular it was. How often has it been cited? This is something that's very important when you're doing uh, research work. It's kind of the equivalent of link analysis on the web. And to some extent, it tells you how reliable the paper is, um, how much other people in the field have thought it's worth mentioning. Uh, if the paper's online somewhere, a lot of these papers are, we provide a link to it. That's number three. Uh, that's useful. You don't even have to leave your desk to find out what's about it. Otherwise, you can go to a library which hopefully has, has a copy. Uh, number four is the fact that we have books, not just um, scientific articles. Obviously, articles are where a lot of the work is done, but books have a lot of useful um, academic information as well. We have that as well. Sometimes we don't have a work ourselves. We never could find it. We never <coughs> index it. Um, but we do know that people cited it, so we at least tell you the citation. And this is basically, this is the part that Anurag is most passionate about because it fulfills his basic dictum, which is, I'd rather be frustrated than ignorant. <laughs> so it's better to know that the paper exists and you can't find it anywhere than to not even know it exists. <laughs> So here are some examples of journals that we're searching over. Um, the basic idea here is it's a lot of them. A lot of uh, scientific publishers are, are uh, collaborating with us in this effort. Uh, another part where um, we go we connect with libraries is that um, if you're actually doing this kind of thing inside a library, then if the library has rights to that work, they bought electronic rights to the work, whatever, then we make that available to people who are searching for it on the web, they don't necessarily even need to go to the physical library. And we have a special link there. This one is for, for Stanford. Um, and we put it up when we recognize that they're searching from campus and that that campus has the rights to it. Um, so it tells you whether it's at the library and if it's available electronically, you can just look at it right there. So as you can see, we're very much um, of the same same mind as, as you know, we talked about some of these structural remarks. Libraries aren't going away. We uh, kind of complement libraries in some way um, rather than trying to supplant them. And I described how this works already. So this is just a yay us quote. <laughs> Yeah, yes. Okay. <laughs>